In this video, I'll run through how leaders and knots can increase your casting distance. To start off with, I like to keep the ratio of my braid to leader fairly close. So for my lighter setup, when I'm casting 15 to 30 gram lures, I'll use 12 pound braid, uh, which I'm using grinder braid, and then I've got around 16 to 20 pound leader. So usually no more than 10 pound difference. For my heavier setup, where I'm using heavier metals or plugs, I'll generally go 20 pound braid and 30 pound leader. I'll have the heavier setup so that I don't snap my leader using you know, lighter uh, leaders when flicking out large metals into the wind. Also if I'm fishing heavier structure, a heavier leader will help you rip those lures um, out of any sort of seaweedy situations or if you get lures stuck on the reef. If the ratio is too far out, so say you've got 10 pound braid and you're using 40 pound leader, the leader knot is also going to be extra big, particularly using like a double uni knot and that's often getting caught in guides, creating wind knots and the actual strength of the knot will be poorer as well. So one issue to consider is that with modern braid often the diameter is so much smaller than it used to be or it's a lot more silkier. So for example I used to use 10 pound braid and 20 pound leader all the time and then I started using a really thin diameter 10 pound braid and it would make it a lot more difficult to cinch up appropriate knots for casting heavier lures. When casting off the beach, the FG knot is the gold standard. It's much stronger than a double uni knot or some of those other quicker knots. It also catches a lot less weed because it's a lot sleeker and it moves through the guides fairly well. So I used to run this with a longer leader and then I'd chop it down every time I'd change lures using a loop knot. So I'll run you through how I use the loop knot, but I don't use this as much anymore. I'll explain this a little later, but it has a big impact on casting distance. So for the loop knot, I grab the two ends, push them together to create a little loop here, pull through, grab my tag end, put it through the lure, and then push it through the same way that the line came out. That's really important. Pull it down, pull the lure to the point that the circle's just in front of it, so it's a little loop. I pinch the little circle, twist the tag around four or five times and this is important again it's got to go back through the same way that the other two tags were through and pull a little bit of saliva important that you really cinch the knot so see you got to pull it nice and tight both tag and line and then I'll clip it down and I have the tag facing the other way, so if I'm pulling it through weed, it's not going to get caught. The loop allows the lure to give a little bit more action. So what I use now instead is a lure clip. This is so I can have a shorter leader. This allows it so that the knot never goes through any of the guides, slowing down the rate that the line's flying off your reel, and also reduces the weight of the fluorocarbon uh, line, slowing it down. So I like to use barrel style uh, clips that way it gives the lure still a lot of action and also they're really easy to tie on and, and make it really easy to change your lures quickly so I've got my vex bag there when I'm casting so I can quickly change lures pending if I see certain bait or whatnot with the clip I can change lures without ever changing the length of my leader I just tie that on with a basic uni knot so the length of my leader that I have is generally so the uh, FG knot sits just outside of the last guide of my rod and the leader probably goes down to the first guide. So you know you're looking at about a meter and a half or so. I generally use eight to nine foot rods mostly. I predominantly cast smaller lures and stick baits as well. The other benefit of using a lure clip as well, it also gives you a little bit of a buffer for those um, teethy critters. So particularly if I'm using buckaboo style lures or soft plastics, you get an extra centimeter or two depending on what size lure clip you're using. And this absolutely makes a big difference. If you cast lighter lures like myself, so I usually casting lures around that sort of 15 to 30 grams mostly for Taylor, um, it makes a big difference to do this tiny little tweaks because every meter that you gain counts. If you got, you know, 60 gram lures that you cast now with a big old rod, 
doesn't make as much of a difference. Having said that, having this shorter leader where it's not hitting the guides will always stop you getting wind knots, um, no matter what type of fishing you're doing. So overall, I try and match my braid closer to my leader than I used to. So I'm using 12 pound braid and I'll use 16 to 20 pound leader um, for those lighter lures. And I'll make sure that my leader length is about a meter and a half. So it's just sticking out the end of my rod and that FG knot or W knot, depending on what I'm using, isn't going through those guides when I'm casting. I'm also using a lighter strength of leader so that I get a further cast as well. I reckon it also gives you a ability to give you a little bit more action, particularly if you're flicking it around like these bucket boots. Thanks for watching. For more Taylor Perth Metro fishing videos, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section.